Hi everyone, uh, we're back and today due to the majority of you guys wanting a tutorial on custom UI verse, that's what we're going to be doing today. So before we begin, a uh, shout out to this person, Jock, on Twitter who actually uploaded on the 9th of September, who I guess discovered this method or was the person who I first saw doing this method. So uh, shout out to this person. Yeah, go follow. Him. All right, so to get started, we're only going to be needing two things really. We're going to need a HUD message device. So you can find one just going to your Fortnite devices and, then, you know, your standard HUD message device. We just need one of these. And then we're also going to be making a blueprint user interface. So the way we do that is I have this UI stuff folder here. So I'm just going to click on this. And here I'm just going to right click and then go down here where it says user interface. I just want to click on this widget blueprint. There's two options, uh, the modal dialog. Uh, this one you can use with the pop-up dialog device. I believe this one you can use for both. And this one is only for the HUD message device. But the one we're going to be using today is going to be this user widget. So I just create one and I'm just going to call it UI underscore custom text. Like that. So if you've never created a UI blueprint before, don't worry. It's super, super easy. Uh, the first thing you need is you have this uh, palette, which gives you all the available widgets that are inside of UEFN. The first thing, first, 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 the first thing you always want to do when creating a new blueprint widget is you want to add a canvas panel. And the reason you want to add this is because you can think of the canvas panel as your entire screen. And what that allows us to do is if I drag, for example, an image widget, you can see that now I can freely move this around the canvas panel. Got it. Okay. We have a canvas panel here and you can see that uh, this is very intuitive. You can just drag and drop stuff like this and you can just like place it around. Okay, so the first thing we need is, as you can see, I gr grabbed one of these UEFN text box. Uh, obviously, we're going to be needing this because this renders text. And then if you can see we can resize the actual space. Uh, but we can see we have all the options of the text here. Specifically, if we go down here, we have our size, which we can change. And that's going to make our text bigger, smaller whatever, and you can just click size to content, which will always, you know, do that. Uh, you can play around with the settings, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it here. One thing I do like to change is in this alignment tab, I just like to make it 0.5. Uh, that way, when I move this, you can see that now it's gonna expand from the center like this instead of going from left to right. So this is the actual text block that is going to be dynamically changing. So I'm just gonna leave it. So the first thing we need is to create a new view model and the way we do this is if you created a new uh, widget blueprint you're going to want to go down here to where it says view bindings you want to click on this and you can see that because this is a fresh blueprint we don't have a view model and it's going to tell me that this editor requires a view model and you can see it gives us the option of creating a new view model so of course i'm just going to click that and you can see we get this little tab so we have a couple of options here we have a creative modal dialog uh, this one you would use for the pop-up device. We're not going to be using this one. And then this beacon, which um, as far as I can tell, it does nothing really uh, or nothing useful anyway as of now. And then finally, we have this device message view model. This one is for the HUD message device, which of course we are going to be using. So you want to click on this one that says device message view model. Just click on this and just select that. And you can see that now uh, we have this uh, HUD message device. And here just list all the properties that correspond to a HUD message device. For example, the icon, the background color, and then the text, the outline strength. Uh, so that's fine. Once you've added this, um, that's pretty much it. You can just close this view model. We now have our view model. Firstly, you want to just select this. So make sure this is blue. And then you, you want to bring up this view bindings thing again. Just click on this. And then you want to go up here to where it says add widget custom text. Okay, so just click on this. And you can see that that's added our custom text widget. Now, if this added something else, like for example, if I have an image and then let me just delete this real quick. Uh, so for example, if you accidentally added this image, uh, you can just click on this and then you can just change it here. Uh, so for example, I'm just going to change it to the custom text. So here, uh, these you can just think of as fields. And then this field, the first one is going to correspond to all the fields that, that correspond to this widget in this case this custom text so if you click on this you notice that this custom text because it's a uefn text block it has all these properties it has is enabled clipping pivot you know standard text stuff but most importantly we have our text field here so you want to click on this 
right? So make sure this text field is selected. And the reason we're doing this is because if you notice, there's an arrow here. This is one way to widget. This means that we're getting whatever the field is here, and then we're assigning one way to this text field. So we're going to be getting text from here, and whatever that text is, we're going to be assigning that text to the text that corresponds to our custom text widget. So in this way, we can control the text of this widget using this field right here. So what is this field going to be? Well, if we click on this, you can see we have a couple of options here. The one we want to select is this UEFN HUD message device. And as you can see, um, just like when we created our view model, we get the HUD message device and all its properties, its background color, the icon, etc. But most importantly, we have the text here. So you want to select on this text and select that. And now what this is saying is that we're going to be getting the text that's inside the HUD message device. And then we're going to be passing that into the text and we're going to be setting the widgets text to whatever the text is here. That's pretty much it. So the way we're going to be controlling this is by changing the text of the HUD message device. So once we have that, um, that's pretty much it. You can just close this, just click away. And then you just want to compile and save just like that and you want to close this all right so now we can move on to our hud message device here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go here down here to where it says hud widget so look for this hud widget thing and then on this you want to click on this and you want to select the, the blueprint widget you created um i apologize for this uh activated windows thing here uh it's kind of getting in the way here but the widget we created was remember our ui underscore, underscore custom text that's the blueprint we created so you want to select this and now instead of rendering text it's going to render this uh blueprint instead and instead what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to set this message because remember whatever the message of this hud message device is going to be that's going to be passed into the blueprint and it's going to set the widgets text to whatever this message is and the cool thing is we can control the message of this HUD message device within verse. So that's what we're going to be doing. But just to show you guys that this works, we can type in something like this is a HUD message device. So just type that there. And then I'm just going to show on round start just to show you guys that this is working. Now, one other important thing before um, I show you guys here is this placement thing here. This is basically the anchor of the blueprint widget and uh, if you can see here this widget you can see this little white flower kind of thing that is the anchor and if you can see here my position depends on that anchor so if i type in let's say zero position x zero and position x zero you can see that's going to be over here because the anchor is there if i move the anchor here and then type in position zero and position zero this is where my thing would be uh because my anchor is here so it's so my position is is relative to the anchor uh, normally this anchor is uh you can change it here it's by default at the top left here so i'm just gonna leave it there now the reason i'm explaining this anchor is because when we go here this placement is should correspond to all your widgets anchors because my widget is anchored to the top left here my hud message device should be uh you can select custom here and then the screen anchor is going to be top left because that's where my anchor is if let's say for example i go in here and change anchors to the middle uh, this would be the top center so then my thing would be my screen anchor here would be to the top center just so your widget is positioned correctly on the screen and not weirdly positioned if your hud message anchor and your widget anchors don't align another thing with anchors is when you change your hud scale it's going to scale depending on the anchor so for example here it will get smaller um going up here to the center because that's where i've anchored uh, my text here if it was anchored to the left it would sort of scale uh to the top left if that makes any sense and that's pretty much all the settings we need you can change the animation and the outro animation but it's going to animate that um as well so if you want to change that but i'm stalling enough here so we're just going to start our game here here we go this is a hud message device which was exactly the text Okay, now that we know that works, the next logical step is using verse to dynamically change and display whatever we want. So I just made a quick uh, verse device here and I just get the reference to the HUD device here and I have a string to message variable here, which just takes in a string and converts that into a message. 
And the reason we need that is because we're going to be doing HUD device dot set text, which it doesn't take a string. Instead, it takes in a message. So, so this just converts uh, our string into a message type, which we can then pass into here. So it's just a basic for loop going over the numbers one through a hundred. And then we just convert that number into a string, which we then convert into a message. And then we're going to be using HUD device dot set text to set the text to whatever number we're currently at at the for loop. Now, one important thing is that after you set text, you need to show the HUD message device so that it updates its blueprint widget. So we do show and then we just sleep for 0.0. .0 so then we can loop over the next iteration there. And then I'm just going to grab drag out my custom UI device. And I'm just going to reference my HUD message device. And then here I just set it to not show on round start. And we don't really care about the message because this is going to be updated anyway. And I just set um, it to have no animation. So intro animation and outro animation are both set to none. With that, um, I'm just going to build the first code again. All right. So we're back in the game. And when I start my game, you should see that we get, there we go, a custom counter up there at the top of our screen. Uh, now just to show through a point here, I'm going to resize my HUD scale. And you can see that it resizes to the top ish kind of, because that's where we've set our anchor point. And then if I you know, resize it to like 125, you can see that it still resizes based on the anchor. Now to show you guys the real benefit of doing it with a blueprint widget is that this text widget is a lot more customizable than your verse text. So for starters, um, obviously you can change the size, which is something you literally can do in verse for some reason. So you can change the size of the text. You can also change stuff like the color. And you can see that you can get a better visual representation of where this is going to be within your screen, which is already a huge plus. Uh, but one of the biggest things is that we have access to font materials. So here I created a UI material here, which uh, this is just a uh, user interface material domain, and it's literally just a radio gradient um, thing here. So then I can go here and change the font material to my UI text material. And you can see that that gets that. Now it's jittering because um, I haven't applied this. Uh, but you can see we have this nice little gradient kind of thing here. And uh, the reason it was jittering is because I had a sign note here. And then I just plug that into the radius. Um, and you can see how that sort of like goes up and down like that. And you can see that gets reflected here. So we can do that. We can add stuff like an outline. You can literally play around with this and you can make this look a lot nicer than just your. So what that would look like in game is if I start game, you'll see that even if I'm doing it with verse, that still retains its material properties like that. So basically custom text. Okay, so here's a few tips um, on how you can utilize this to the biggest extent. The first thing is if we go into this HUD message device, currently I have this to show for everyone, uh, the message recipient recipient is all, which means that when I show, um, basically showing it to everyone in our game. But what you can do is you can set it to triggering player. And what this allows us to do is that um, now instead of doing show, what we can do is we can get show it to a specific player so for example so here in my code what i'm going to do is um i'm going to be waiting for somebody to interact with this button and when they do we're going to be showing them the we're going to be showing that specific player the hud device so i'm just going to get rid of this so actually i so i actually haven't set the text here yet which remember we need to do that before we actually show them anything because that's what we're that's what the widget is going to be uh, that's because I want to show you guys something. So you can actually get the name of a player uh, within verse, but you can only do so um, and you can only pass that information into things that uh, accept a message. For example, our HUD device, when we use the set text, that accepts a message. And the way we do this is I'm going to do something like agent to message. So we create a similar function uh, or a similar variable like this, our string to message. But instead of passing in a string, we pass in an agent type agent and we just do message and then here we do equals to we just pass in our crazy braces here and then we just pass in the agent like this so what this actually is going to do is it's going to get the name of the agent and convert that into a message now if you're trying to convert this into this agent into a string it's not going to work it only works within a 
message. But luckily, what we can do here is we can do HUD device dot set text. And then we just do agent do message. And then we pass in the agent here, which we're grabbing here from the person who, you know, interacted with this button. Now, the cool thing is that when we show this device, this is only going to show to the person who, you know, we're showing it to this new text is only going to update when we do show to this specific player. So in this way, we can have one single HUD device. And with that single HUD device, we can have custom messages for every player. And you would only control that using the show for the, uh, and then pass in the specific player. And of course, make sure that your HUD device here is set to triggering player. Okay, so we're in a game. And when we start the game, we should see um, that when we press a button, you can see I get my name. Oh my God. And there's so many cool things you can do with this. Um, I guess you could make a custom leaderboard if you want it. But you can see that gets the name of me. And if this were in a real game, uh, because I'm the only one who presses this button, I'd be the only one who actually sees my name. If somebody else presses a button, because we're getting the name of the player who pressed the button. Now, one final thing that I should mention that's probably important is that if you have another text block here, unfortunately, you can only pretty much bind one single thing to the HUD message. Um, because if you try to, let's say, for example, create this for the other text block, um, this is essentially just going to have the same text as the HUD message device again. So if you wanted to have multiple custom text, you would create a, a new blueprint widget, and then you would need a new HUD device. And importantly, you would need to change the layer here. Um, so currently this would be on layer zero and you're only allowed to show one HUD message per layer. Um, so this would, if this was a different HUD message device and you want to show both of these blueprints, you would need to ensure that these both have different layers. So this would be layer one. And then if you add another one, let's say for, I don't know, like, um, how many players are alive, that's another one. And let's say you have another custom for, um, player names or whatever, that would be layer three. And you have another one for like, um, gold or inventory or stuff like that, or resources that would be player four. And then let's say you want to have a six when we have currently five you can see we're unfortunately bound to four layers but there's a way to get around this um it's a bit exploity i don't know if it's um it, it actually works in game but i don't know if epic's gonna pass that and the way you do that is you can just type in like go up here type in five and literally just control a control c and you want to go into the layer and then just right click and then paste and you can see that that's gonna select that two layer so effectively we now have um six layers and we can continue doing this by you know typing six somewhere in a notepad or whatever just copying that and then you can also shift left click on this that's going to create layer six so this way you can technically have infinite layers and you can show as many ui stuff as you want but i'm not i hope epic doesn't patch this because um i would just rather they give us at least I don't know, like 20 layers or 10 layers or something because i mean five is just boring come on we need more epic please um but yeah this is a way to get around this um this is incredibly useful but you can see um i can do like 100 even you can see we have layer 100 so if you need that much ui you need to you're making a mobile game and you're you know throwing all this like offers and stuff then congrats you have 100 layers but anyway, that's pretty much it. As always, um, I hope this was helpful. And yeah.